Okay, welcome everybody to the third class of Soul Fitness with Rabbi Dov Cowan. It is my pleasure to hand over to you, Rabbi Cowan. Thank you so much, Rabbi Fisherman. Obviously joining us here live outside Buckingham Palace where the preparations for the coronation are really heating up. We've got lots of people queuing up to see the King and Queen Consort Camilla, and of course the Shah delegation, Rabbi Mark Fishman, will be at Buckingham Palace, obviously, to have a cup of tea with the Queen, uh, not the Queen, a King, at the relevant time. Nice to see everyone, how are you all doing? Welcome back to the show, it's lovely to have you here, welcome, nice to have the ones who've got their cameras on, that's Rita and Gita and Lynn, and I know obviously Sonny, Karen, Terry, RGB22, Barry and Laura, your cameras aren't working at the moment, um, the videos aren't working, but that's, I'm sure you'll we'll get them on very soon. So um, we can get we can get them working. <laughs> um, good to see you. It's been great. So um, I've just been told that I've got 50 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to kind of jump in um, and uh, and just check in with. Well, first, let's check in how, how some of the ideas have landed with you. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit of a recap what we've done so far. And the first two sessions, I'm going to recap with you. And then I'll take it into the final session today. So I'm going to go back into the um, into the PowerPoint, uh, if that's OK with everybody. Here we go. And I have to start the slideshow. It's been OK. Let's do this. Yeah, look at that. It's amazing how these things work. OK, so. Um, Rabbi Cowan, your Wi-Fi is cutting out, unfortunately. I don't know if you can hear us. That's what we are looking to do. We're in the first half round of this BS section, which is the... And we have lost him. Okay, some technical difficulties here. I'm sure he's going to come back on in a moment. And here he is. Bear with us, everybody. Um, Rabbi Fishman. Yes. Uh, sometimes with the um, the Zoom link, if you just go on audio, it is clearer. Right, but I know Rabbi Cowan has a presentation. No, it happened last time too, that's Rabbi why. Rabbi Cowan, your Wi-Fi was cutting out and almost as, as soon as you began with a shared screen, we heard nothing. So perhaps you wish to start again and uh, hopefully- I'll, the... I'll start again, yeah, I, I don't know what that is. It's very, very strange why it's done that. Um, I can hear you clearly now. As soon as you shared screen it then it then went to a inferior quality and we actually didn't hear anything so, 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 again, so guys, this is what i'm going to do i'm just going to just stay with me we're going to go to, actually this is it's a blur A little journey into my house. Run in second. Okay. Right. Follow me, everyone. One second. Okay. Hopefully. This will be fantastic. And we don't have any issues. I'm going to click to my home network.
Okay. Are you actually with me now, everyone? Yeah, you're with me now. Yeah, everyone's with me. Okay, fine. Let's try now. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be better now. And obviously, Gary and Sharon have joined us. They heard it's a better quality. It's better. So Gary and Sharon are here for us for that. Let's try and see what happens when I when I share the screen. Here we go. Three, two, one, and action. Okay, you just have to shout up, guys. If 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 um, if you think the the, the quality is good so far, yeah, we're good. Okay, fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we talked about the three elements of of mindfulness based stretch stress reduction (MBSR) um, being the idea of breath, coming back to our breath at all times. Uh, anytime we feel stressed, anytime we feel overwhelmed, we're coming back to our breathing. The other thing we talked about was living in the moment. How important that is in mindfulness and being curious about the world and seeing the world from new perspectives. And I showed you how each of those three elements um, have their, um, their, their roots in, in Jewish ideas, the idea of neshama and neshima. If you remember, we talked about that, the idea of breath in Hebrew is to breathe is neshima, linshom. And that's, of course, intrinsically linked to the word neshama, which means the soul. We talked about hayoim, this real, uh, in, very, very, this imperative to see ourselves living in this moment and being in the moment and not focusing on anything other than this moment. We had a beautiful piece we learned from Rabbi Nachman of Breslev and also about being curious about the world. And I talked to you about his boyness. If you weren't here for those first that first week, at least, I'm sorry, but I can't go over it again. But we talked about his boyness, the idea of contemplation, taking time. And we saw how this is all over the Torah. It's all over the Gemara. It's all over Hasidut, the idea of taking time to look into the world um, to, to ask questions of the world. I think I may have mentioned that, that Abraham, we, 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 we often taught as children, when I was at least taught, that Abraham was three years old when he discovered that there was a God. But of course, that isn't necessarily true. He was actually 40. So how do you, um, how do you resolve the issues of 40 or three? The answer is he was three when he began the search and he was 40 when he arrived at the conclusion. So it's been, he spent 37 years of his life searching for God looking asking debating questioning and this is something which um especially in my in my realm of outreach jewish outreach so many young people will come to conclusions without ever having spent serious time even thinking about or contemplating so we have to be misappointed and we have to look into the world we have to ask questions from the world around us that was class one class two in class two we went through an architecture of the soul okay we mentioned if you if, if you might remember the idea of the three levels of the soul, the nefesh, the ruach, and the neshama. And who remembers? Who here remembers the glass blower analogy? Anyone here remember the glass blower analogy we talked about last week? Anybody remember the glass blower analogy? Anyone want to be brave enough to tell us what the glass blower analogy was all about? Anybody? No, no one's brave enough today. Okay, so I'll have to do it again. So we talked about the glass blower analogy. The idea, I have it here in front of me is that, um, oh gosh, you know what? <laughs> well, I'm just gonna tell you. The last bit of analogy is that God breathed in, then he blew the soul into Adam. And just like a glass blowing, they make glass, they get the hot molten sand. They take the pipe, they put it into the molten sand and they blow and it creates the, the vessel. So too, the, the analogy is that God breathed in, that's the Shema. He breathed out and the air flew in into the vessel, into the pipe. That was the, that is Ruach and Nefesh is where the breath comes to a, a stop on the interface with the glass. Hence, your Nefesh is the lowest part of the soul. And last week, for those of us who were with us last week, we talked about the idea of Menuchas HaNefesh, about calming ourselves down, calming down the, the, the lower part of the soul by focusing on our physical feelings and our emotions and our fleeting thoughts. And last week's focus really was about um, Jewish meditation as a tool for calm, as a tool for calm, to, to, to settle down the, 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 the system, to settle down the monkey mind, to settle down all the whirring thoughts, emotions, feelings that are going on. Uh, Judaism speaks very openly about menuchas hanefesh, coming back to a place of calm. <coughs> this week, for today, what I really want to focus on is actually the third part of it is to really focus on Jewish meditation for spiritual connection, utilizing um, meditation to go up, to go up to a place where we can connect, we can connect to our creator 
in a way which really we many of us have not had an opportunity to to to, to actually access uh, in our, in our lives. You know, many of us have had um, I, I put myself in the same boat here that many of us have had Jewish education at schools that didn't necessarily speak to the soul. It spoke much more to the idea of do's and don'ts and cans and can'ts and and uh, a lot more of the nuts and bolts of of the technical aspects of Judaism without really going into the, the soul and to talk about the soul and and the shama and and looking constantly to build that relationship that deepened relationship with our creator we never really were a- able to access that so my question for you is we'll start off we've got the lines are open now it's um li- the lines are open here on, uh, on 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 the radio show let me hear from you what is it in your mind that stops us from being able to feel Shem's presence. I want to hear from you guys. You've got the lines open. Gita, Sharon, Michael, Lynn, and we've got a few more people as well here on the line. Terry, Danielle, Gary, Barry, Karen, Sonny. Lines open. Let me ask you, what stops us from feeling the presence of Hashem in our lives? What is it that stops us? Who's going to go first? Who's going to be brave enough? Okay, I, I will. Okay, Lynn, go for it. L- welcome. Um, thank you. Um... I think for me, when I think about it, it was the fear of the unknown. Oh, nice. Okay. What, what will happen? What will I glean? How will it change my life? Beautiful. Okay. Very real. It's a very real um, phobia to a certain extent. Any, any fear, like what, what might happen if I go down the rabbit hole? Thank you, Lynn, for being brave and sharing. Thank you. Who's next? Who else wants to say what stops? what's stopping you or us? I mean, we can make it more general. It doesn't have to be necessarily limited to your experience what do you think stops people from being able to feel the presence of Hashem or, or feel that Hashem is, is there in their life who else wants to speak anybody else you were brave enough too much activity uh, beautiful Terry thank you yes too much activity right people are running and going and toing and throwing in their lives and therefore there's no space there's no space for it in fact of Moshe Chaim Lutzato, who was the author of a book called the Mesila Sharim, the Ram Chal, as he's known. He, he says that, um, he quotes there, actually, from Jeremiah, book of Jeremiah. And in the book of Jeremiah, it talks about how people are running like horses to war. They're just going headlong on a charge without having any repose, any moments to think about what they're doing. And he uses that as an example of how, now, this is all about the 1700s, so how much... Uh, it, it, I kind of shudder to think what the Ramchal would say if he arrives in, in the world of 2023, but just how distracted we are and how busy we are. So we, where's there time to really feel Hashem's presence in our life? Our brains are, are addled. We're constantly going to different places in our mind. So that's a great answer, Terry. Thank you. Anybody else want to have, a, have one well, last I, call? I, I was, yeah. was going to actually say the same thing about being too, too busy, too active, too not really giving it the space the time to consider beautiful yeah yeah that that Um, was really the main thing for me i think yeah thank you sharon there's a famous uh, poet from england called william wordsworth who i'm sure you're you're familiar with who his famous poem is uh, how often and now i'm really embarrassing myself because i don't actually know off my heart but something 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 to stop and stare but obviously one of you will know how to that, that 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 poem off my heart i'm sure how embarrassing that the English rabbi can't quote Wordsworth. It's not good. It's not good. I'm going to have to speak. I'm going to get punished by, by Rabbi Fishman. Okay, so you gave us some, good, some answers there. The fear of the unknown. We're too busy. Things are going on. So here's an answer, actually, from the Pietet the Rebbe. The Pietet the Rebbe, who I haven't really brought in yet, was uh, an absolute visionary, um, way beyond his time in many ways. The Pietet the Rebbe lived in Poland, pre-war and he was murdered by the nazis in 1943 um he was a master educator and he was someone who had his finger on the pulse of the rising sort of the the the, the changes the main changes um in the jewish world especially in, in the haredi jewish world um in, in especially when it comes to education and the thirsty souls that weren't being watered that weren't being looked after um, and he wrote a number of different books. Um, I, has anyone here ever heard of the Piazzetz the Rebbe before? Has anyone ever come across him? A, a famous book called Aish Kodesh, which really was his um, sermons that he gave in the Warsaw Ghetto. He was in the Warsaw Ghetto and he would do Shabbat sermons that after Shabbat were written down. That's a book called Aish Kodesh. 
another book he has, which is called the um, Chovas HaTalmidim, which is a student's obligation, which was a book for kids in school to teach them about how to how to really develop themselves as students instead of learning how to just be disciplined and become like robots. He really pushed this agenda of children being able to think for themselves. Anyway, this is a beautiful quote from, from the Piers Etzner Rebbe who spoke about Hashkata, who spoke about be, being able to get quiet, who spoke about the idea of, of, of taking time in our lives to really feel connected. So this, this is the quote. It's from, it's from a safer book called Derech HaMelech, and it goes like this. Truthfully, there exists within each Jew a portion of godliness. However, a person hides it within his thoughts, that's your machshavas, your thoughts, needs, and all other things that he wants to do. If a person would stop, even for one hour, this constant stream of thoughts and wants, they would become aware of this godly essence. However, this is coming into what, you know, some of you were saying and we went round, you know, they're so busy. Since people run after their thoughts, what will they be doing tomorrow? How will they make money, have a job? How will they find honor? Therefore, their thoughts are rushing constantly without a break. In other words, there is within each, every single one of us this really powerful connection, which is innate. It's there. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to go anywhere. It's there always, this connection. And if you would stop the stream of thoughts that are flying through our head at any moment in time, you would notice it. You would see it. It would become clear to you what is happening. However, let's be honest, right? We need to have jobs. We need to make monies. We have to make money. We need to find honor. And therefore, our thoughts are rushing, rushing, rushing constantly to and fro, backwards and forwards, without a moment stop. And therefore, we don't have, we, we're not able to, to, to plug in, to tune in to, 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 to this godly essence. There's this covering, there's this layer um, of, uh, it's really almost like a barrier um, of, 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 of thinking, which is so busy, which is causing a log jam, it's causing this big traffic jam in our minds. He actually said that he says the Rebbe, very interesting, he mentioned that, he said if you would, a person would freeze frame at any moment, a person's mind and look inside, he'd say, there's just thousands of thoughts. And this, again, he was talking about subconscious thought way before I think a lot of the, you know, um, the experts were able to understand and tap into the idea of subconscious thought. But he's talking about subconscious thinking, about at any moment, the amount of things that are going on in our heads. We're using such a small proportion of our brain size. Even right now in this class, I'm sure a lot of you are doing like, if you, which I understand because we're all so busy. There's so many things that people that need us, there are people that want us, there are people that are calling our attention. So even when we make time to come on like a class like this, there's things we have to do. So it's hard for us to focus unless we take the moment to stop and to be really, really present. So the Rebbe is telling us that it's innate. It's innate. That the, the connection with Hashem is innate. And we have to, we have to slow things down. We have to, we have to, we have to really, um, we have to take the, the, the thought process and slow it down and, and, and slow down to the speed of life. There's one other thing that wasn't mentioned when I asked you the question just now. I put it out there. There was one other thing that people didn't mention. I think Lynn was, was most, um, your question was most, uh, was, was closest, I suppose. And that is for many people, they're uncomfortable with the idea of God generally. They're uncomfortable with the idea of there being something outside of them that maybe is in control. I don't know if it's innately those people who are who suffer more from 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 the need to be in control, um, to know what's going on. But there are many people out there that, that, that actually they they really su struggle with the notion of there being a force out there. And this is also something that I think really stands in the way. Um, we are constantly struggling with ego. You know, it's interesting. I, I so there's this there's a lot of talk right now in sort of psychology, and I know the few of you actually on this Zoom call as we speak, um, who I know have either reached out or told me that are involved in psychology and understand the world of psychology. But there's a lot of talk, obviously now about um, a lot of these 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 concepts such as ego. Right, this is a book by someone called Ryan Holiday. It's become a bit of a bestseller called Ego is the Enemy: The Fight to master our greatest opponent. You know, he has a whole hashkafai, a whole way of seeing the world that 
ego is the main enemy of all of us in life. Ego is that force which is pulling us down. Some people like to call the Yetzirah, right? The anti-self, the, the part of us which is always trying to knock us down and take us into directions which are really intrinsically bad for us. Some like to call that the ego. Well, look, the truth is that it's a longer discussion, not for here, but the ego really is something which is, which is very important. We have to have a healthy ego. The healthy ego obviously recognizes that there is a creator and the creator really is in charge, is the one who is, is who's, who's, who's the ultimate power is with our creator, but yet he gives us that opportunity, he gives us that, <coughs> he invites us in this world to exercise that power. And it's this constant oscillation, those states we have in our mind of, of, of recognizing God being the ultimate power and also understanding that we have a role to do. It's this oscillation we're always dealing with. But when it comes to meditation, one of the most amazing things about meditation is, well, in, in, in the meditation that I do, it's about calming the ego and it's about making space for God. As I call it, the way I've coined it is making space for the embrace. Making space for the embrace. You know, when you don't, and there's too much of you in the room, and there's too much of your thinking in the room, there's too much of your needs and wants in the room, so there's no space anymore for the creator. There's no space for Hashem. This is a beautiful quote here um, I've got from Rabbi Nachman of, of Breslev, who, I, as you can see, I've quoted a fair amount in this course. And for anyone who hasn't yet um, accessed the world of Rabbi Nachman, uh, I hope you will um, take some time to really look into some more of his incredible, incredible insights. This is a piece from Likutei Maharan, which I think really, um, I think cuts really to the point of what I'm saying. I, in fact, if I had a volunteer that would like to read this, at, at all, anyone, any volunteers, the one who saves, saves you hearing my voice the whole time on this, on this Zoom call, you can, anyone brave enough to read some Rabbi Nachman on live online? Otherwise, I'm going to have to just volunteer someone. Thank you, Lynn, for volunteering. Thank you, Lynn. Big Thank okay, you, Lynn, I'm, I'm on. Thank you. Okay. Now behold, the shadow comes from a material thing standing opposite a spiritual thing, i.e., which is more ethereal than it. For example, the materiality of a tree or a stone opposite the light of the sun or the moon casts a shadow. Likewise, a solar or lunar eclipse is because of the Earth's shadow. And also the sun itself, vis-a-vis -vis that which is above it. It's material and casts a shadow opposite it. Therefore, a person commensurate with his materiality and commensurate with his deeds, accordingly makes a shadow within himself, which blocks from him God's light an influx of bounty. But if a person nullifies himself so that he is not at all part of this world, then he does not make a shadow and he receives the light of God. Beautiful. I mean, I'll let that sort of land for, for everyone listening and for you as well, Lynn, because often when we're reading, we, it's hard for us to actually to take in what we're reading. But what Rabbi Nachman is saying here is that we can build the barriers that ego can sometimes be so um, so strong that that it it it, it really acts as this, this buffer zone, this, bar this barrier to receive Hashem's light. There's so much of us that we can no longer receive the light. The way to receive it is to nullify oneself. This is what we call bitul in Hebrew, bitul, to nullify yourself and to take yourself out of the picture enough. Obviously, you have to remain to a certain extent, and therefore. You can now receive the light. I mean, now I'm going to go to a few, a few, um, a few slides to demonstrate what we're talking about here. When you have something which is opaque, obviously you can't see through it. Semi-transparent and transparent. I like to use this. It's called the light shade analogy. You like my analogies, right? I try and make it as analogous as possible, right? But when something's opaque, right? You know, the, it's it's so strong that the, the barrier is so strong, so the light is, is can't. In this case, look. It's not it's not a perfect analogy because here obviously the light bulbs in the inside. We're talking about the light being on the outside and you're being on the inside. But if the covering is opaque, there's no room for light to come in. And that is unfortunately what we do. We we create the barriers with so much ego that it becomes so opaque. Our e our ego stops the light coming in. And therefore, part of what our role is to try and make that barrier go away and to become as transparent as possible so that the light 
can enter. That is part of what meditation is doing. One of the great, for me, um, uh, insights that, that, that came over the years of, of doing meditation, learning meditation, was by calming down the body, by calming down the ego, by making the space for the embrace, suddenly I've gone from opaque to transparent, and the light is, is invited in. So, I mean, coming back to a few of these uh, slides I jumped through, this is something we see very powerfully in, in a word. It, it's something in, in a word. The word is ani. In Hebrew, everyone knows what ani means, right? It's one of the first words anyone would ever learn if you're ever trying to learn Hebrew. Ani is, is I. It's me. Ani. Which implies ego, which implies self, which implies my own little world. But look how interesting it is. The same letters of the word ani is the word ayin. I've done it. I've done it as obviously as possible for you with the with the, with the color, as you can see, right? There would no be a nun sofit. The nun would not be, be longer. But I just wanted to show you the same letters. The same letters of ani is ayin. Ayin meaning nothingness, right? Or in this case, no thingness, because what really the most essential part of you is something which is no thing. Your soul isn't a thing which can be measured. It can't be put on a Geiger scale or a, or a weight scale. It can't be tasted. You're, it's a no thing. Your, your soul is a no thing, but yet it's the most important thing, but it's no thing. And your eye is your no thingness and your ani is your eye. And it's quite an amazing. Again, this is the, the states of mind we go through in life between ani and I in. Ani and I in between I, me, just being me and my own entity, my own independent entity, and then going to a state of I in, realizing that I am a, a created soul, I, I, okay, but at the same time, everything I had and I have is from Hashem, is given to me from Hashem, and it's that nothingness, that feeling that it's, I have no intrinsic power within myself, it's all really what I've got from Hashem. And in other words, the mantra that I like to use, and we'll do meditation starting in, in a few minutes, the, the, the mantra I like to use this meditation is, they say the words, Hashem, with you, I am everything. Without you, I am nothing. Or actually, you can flip it. It's even better. Without you, I'm nothing. With you, I'm everything. And this is quite an interesting thing because from a Jew, Jew, Jewish perspective, we may be <coughs> a little bit different to some of the other practices out there in other religions where you might say, you know, I'm a nothing, I'm a nothing, I'm a nothing. Well, that's not true. That's not, that's not a Jewish idea. You're not a nothing. You're in everything. But you're also a nothing. Do you understand? It's like we're both. We're both a nothing and an everything because Hashem, without you, I'm nothing. With you, I'm everything. With your power running through me, with your connection, I'm everything. I'm everything. And, and therefore, I have a world which I have to fix, which I have to, um, I have to it really engage in and use the cock and the strength and the abilities. I have to go out there and do it. But without you, Hashem, I'm nothing. And the power of, of meditation is such, it's so strong because... By melting away, so to speak, the kach of the ani, the, the, the opaque, thick barrier of self, of ego, of me, my wants, my needs, everything, it's me, 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 I, me, mine. By melting away that opaque layer, I come to that beautiful, transparent sense of like, Hashem, I'm me, but I'm just powered by you. The light inside of me is powered by you. Everything is powered by you. And, I, and, and it's, it's such a powerful, it's such a wonderful, profound notion, which is life-changing, quite literally life-changing. Now, how are we going to do that? So this is the, just preparation for the, for the meditation today. And this is a lovely quote from someone called the Khalban of Chaim Cohen Fahriya. Interesting story of the Khalban. Khalban, if any Israeli, any Hebrew speakers we have on the call, the Khalban is... Uh, um, it's an amazing story. The Chalban means a dairy farmer or the milkman. Milkman, that's what it means. Chalav, Chalban. There was this tzaddik. He was a hidden tzaddik. He lived on a mashav and he was basically the milk guy um, milking the cows. But no one realized that he was this <laughs> absolutely immense Talmud Chacham who was versed in all of Kabbalah. Um, and only at the end of his life, uh, his teachings were, were really put out there. And people realized that the guy that was milking the cows every morning was actually a huge master Kabbalist. But anyway, Coming back to this, the Chavan uh, writes, this is a, uh, a source from him. He says that the more that our external abilities, that's our body, our limbs, our senses, etc., they're making noise, right? The more distant a person is from being able to listen to the sound of their soul. Now, does that make sense to everyone? I think it does, right? And I think you've all said that in the opening session just now, and I asked you, right? 
the more that our external abilities, our senses are making noise, the more distant you are to hearing the sound of your nesham, of your soul. And why is that a person is unable to listen to the soul? The answer is that the body is speaking constantly. And when we talk, we're unable to listen at the same time. Okay, when we talk, we're unable to listen at the same. Now, there probably are some people out there that are so, you know, incredibly, you know, perfect at multitasking that you can speak and listen at the same time. As a man, I can officially tell you that I can't do this. Although I actually get a bit offended sometimes when people go on and on about how men can't multitask. And I'll always like to say men can't multitask, but I want to tell you something. Have you ever seen an Israeli Sherut driver before? Have you ever been an Israeli Sherut? I mean, now... I've never, I know, I mean, that's that's a level of someone who's driving 100 you know, miles an hour while dealing with five people's change, shooting someone out of the car, you know, overtaking in the fast lane and on their three separate phones all at the same time. So I don't get, I don't, I don't, hold, I don't believe that men can't multitask. I think Israeli short drivers have got a lot to tell us about multitasking. But putting that aside, so um, when the body is talking, this, the soul, you can't hear the soul. When the soul is speaking, the body gets quiet as well. It's really, it's, it's, it's really about quietening down the soul. And in fact, there's a beautiful quote here from the Maharal of Prague, who actually says in his commentary to Prik Avod, this line, it's very, very beautiful. He says, Sheha guf medaber anishama shoteke. When the body is talking, the soul is silent. When the body is busy talking, the soul just can't be heard. You know, you've got to just, it's, uh, there's, there's a great story I, I always like to tell of um, many Oh gosh, not many years ago, about six, seven years ago, I went to visit my parents. Um, I was in the neighborhood, so I went to say hello to them. And I wanted to play a bit of a surprise on them. So what I did was I, I I didn't tell them I was coming. I just went on the phone and was chatting to them on the phone. I walked up at their front door, came to their front door uh, whilst I was on the phone as a bit of a shtick. So I was like, yeah, how are you doing? How's everything going? Um, and the um yeah how's everything going how's everything going uh, and then i rang on the doorbell while while speaking on the phone so i give them a shot they'd come to the door like oh you're at the door but so like so i'm ringing on the door ring on the door ring on the doorbell and no one's answering this is crazy i'm at the door i'm like so i said to my mom mom i think someone's at the front door and she's like no there isn't i was like there is there's someone at your front door just how can you tell i was like i can tell she goes, what? And then suddenly she's, oh, there is. She runs to the front door and there I am. Hi, I'm here. Hello. Um, anyway, so uh, uh, she's like, oh. the, but what happened was that she, they had the TV on really loud. So I'm then knocking and ringing that they got the telly on so loud that they didn't realize. Now, why have I told you this story? It's quite a long story for the point, but it's worth it. Because for so many of us, the telly is on so loud. The TV is on. And therefore, the, the doorbell could be ringing. We just don't hear it because the telly is on, right? We've got to just calm ourselves down, come back to that place of calm and, 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 and allow the body just to, to get quiet. And it's not like then we have to switch the soul on or we have to ask the soul to speak because the, the soul is always speaking. Rav Cook, who I'm going to come to at the end of our session today, Rav Avram Mitzahak and Cook famously said that the soul is always praying. The soul is always praying. Your neshama is always broadcasting. It's just that we don't get to hear. So with that in mind, I thought we'd do a meditation. We'd do like, I'm seeing the time. We've got like maybe 10 minutes, a 10 minute little breathing exercise just to kind of bring this together. And then I'm going to um, bring it home afterwards as well. I'm going to kind of um, give you two little beautiful quotes from, from um, Rav Cook and Rav Bohm, and, sorry, and David Bohm. Uh, but in the meantime, let's do this. Okay, so we're going to do like a 10 minute meditation. So based on this idea, everyone, you can have your cameras on or off, whatever you prefer. Obviously, the camera's off. That's not an invitation to go and, uh, you know, watch uh, the, the, the playoffs. I don't think, are the playoffs finished yet? I don't know. The play They're not on the playoffs, are they, the Canadians? So we don't have to worry about that. They haven't been in the playoffs for many years. I'm talking about, I'm talking about ice hockey, your sport that I, that I love so much. I take it that Montreal Canadiens are not in the playoffs. You don't have to go watch the playoffs. Okay, no, Sharon's helping me here. At least Sharon knows what I'm talking about. Okay. It's not like the days of Guy Lafleur and, and, uh, and Jacques Laplante. Okay. With your, with your back straight on the chair. Okay. And your eyes closed. Let's do this. Okay. Just take a big deep breath into your nose. 
holding and then breathing out again through your nose. Once again, breathing in through the nose. Hold and then breathing out through the nose again. Just letting yourself get a place of calm. Place where you feel just really present. It's nowhere we need to get to right now, nowhere else we need to be. Once again, breathing in through your nose, noticing the cooler air. When you breathe in through your nose, notice the air is cooler when you breathe in. Hold. And as you breathe out again, just noticing the air is warmer as you breathe out. So powerful to connect to our breath. The breath is obviously one of the things we do in our un unconscious state, we're unconsciously breathing, but yet we can focus on our breath, we bring it into our conscious mind. The same way that we can, if we want to, bring our thoughts, even our subconscious thoughts, into a place of conscious thinking and control. Once again, breathing in through your nose, big deep breath in. Hold, and then breathing out again. We're gonna add some rhythm to our breathing. As we know, the world is full of rhythm. We the sun sets, the sun rises, the, 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 the tide comes in, the tide comes out. So I'm gonna ask you to breathe in for three, hold for three, and out for four. So in for three, two, three, hold for three, two, three, and out for four, two, three, four. Once again, in for three, two, three, hold for three, two, three, and out for four. One, two, three, four. Beautiful. Once again, in for three, two, three, hold for three, two, three, and out for four, two, three, four. I'm just saying that you're getting just much calmer, skin tension's going down, your heart rate's going down, your blood pressure's going down, just feeling really calm and in the moment, there's nowhere we need to be, just being safe and held. Noticing the sensation of your feet against the floor, of your body on the chair, just being in this room right now with your eyes closed, just being aware of the wall in front of you, being aware of the wall behind you, being aware of the wall to the right of you, to the left of you, what's above you in the ceiling and down on the floor, just being aware and in the moment, beautiful. Building on what we did last week, we're gonna do Menuchas nefesh. So I'm gonna ask you just to become aware of how you're feeling in your physical self right now. How are you feeling physically? Are you feeling like anything's aching? Do you have any joint pains or anything? Or is it actually feeling great? You feel like your body's feeling wonderful right now than it has for years. How are you feeling in your physical body? Beautiful. Just be aware of now, how are you in your emotions? How are you feeling emotionally? Don't need to judge yourself. It's not about a judging. It's not about good or bad. It's just about being aware of how we feel in our emotions. Just becoming aware. And now finally, just becoming aware of our thoughts. Again, don't interact with your thoughts by just becoming aware of your thinking, aware of what you're thinking about. Don't need to start getting stuck in the mud with your thoughts or reacting to your thoughts. So just being aware of your thoughts. Being aware of your thoughts. Beautiful. Being aware of your thoughts. You can imagine yourself sitting on a chair with your thoughts playing out on a screen in front of you. Just noticing them. No need to judge, no need to interact, just being aware of our thoughts. Beautiful, and as you do that now, take a big deep breath in through your nose and you almost feel like you're climbing up. You're coming up now, being able to look down at your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, physical feelings coming up from this high vista, this high spot. 
call it a balcony, just coming up and looking down, feeling really detached. And at this place, we're going to just invite ourselves to start to shed away layers, start to shed away those layers, shed away those barriers, shed away those feelings that really it's me in control, my needs, my wants, my desires. It's a shared away. You can imagine at the start of this right now that it's like some opaque light shade which is stopping the light coming in. And with each breath, I want you to imagine that, that opaque light shade, that the darkness is dissipating and it's getting thinner and thinner and lighter and lighter. With each breath in, take a deep breath in. Some of the darkness is receding, breathe out, and you get more light. The covering is becoming more and more transparent. There's more and more light coming in. Let's go again, breathing in. As you breathe out, just take another layer away, another layer away from the lampshade of a thick ego that stands in the way like a shadow. My needs, my wants, my desires, my hopes. Just take it and just let it melt away. And you can begin to start saying the following mantra. You can either say it out loud, you can say it to yourself. The mantra is Hashem. Without you, I am nothing. With you, I am everything. Hashem, without you, I am nothing. With you, I am everything. Hashem, without you, I am nothing. With you, I am everything. You can either say it, you're all on mute, so I won't hear you. Or you can say in your mind, Hashem, without you, I am nothing. With you, I am everything. And that should be on the one hand, the feeling of giving up, but also a feeling of feeling just so connected and strongly connected to the source of all, to the source of everything. And that lampshade has now come to a state of being completely translucent. Translucent. The light is shining through, feeling so connected, feeling so strongly connected to the source, the creator, the source of everything, nourishing you, giving you life, giving you a sense of purpose. Just fe feel like you're bathing and basking in that light, that light of connection. Your body is calm. The body just let you just get really calm and thank your body for that. Thank your body for allowing you just to get to such a lovely calm space where you can make the space for the embrace. Beautiful. Take another big deep breath in. And breathe out and just take with you now as we end this meditation anything that you feel any any feeling of of goodness of connection of strength of inner knowledge of light of happiness and joy just take it with you now as we end the meditation big deep breath in breathe out and whenever you're ready you can rub your hands together rub your hands together but cover your eyes and then you can come back into the room. If you prefer to stay in the meditation, you can. So just to finish off, because I'm looking at the clock and I did promise that my fishman I would finish off on time. This is just this is a quote from Rav Cook, Rav Avram Yitzhak Cohen Cook, who was the first chief rabbi of the pre-state of Israel. It's a beautiful line about wholeness and holiness. He says, the ultimate goal of life is holiness. Holiness is supreme unity which contains nothing of the weakness of morality. Holiness does not fight against the self-love embedded deep within the soul of every living being, but rather it sets us up in such a superior state that the more one loves oneself, the more the good within will spread over all, all around a person, over the whole world, all of being. I have, like I say, the, all of these quotes are on the PDF I've given to Rabbi Fishman, the PDF and the PowerPoint. But really, it's with that I want to end, that the whole purpose 
is always to come back to this state of wholeness. Like you're feeling right now, you can put your hand to your chest and you can feel that light from the meditation just really just dissipating now through all aspects of your body, lifting you up. You know, as you leave your house today, as you or as you interact with whoever you're interacting, never forgetting that we have that innate holiness. The PSS the Rebbe has told us that our thoughts and are getting in the way, our ego is getting in the way. So just calm it down. Remember who you are. Come to that place of this just innate self-knowledge of your holiness, of your holiness. And that light will have impact on everyone you meet. It will go out to the whole of being, to the whole world. So just to say, it's been a real... A real pleasure teaching you all, um, and thank you once again. Um, the uh, thank we you. Went through, we went through so much together. I know it was quite a lot in this short space of time, but I hope it was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, thank you very much, every one of you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciated so much. I'm so happy, Sharon. Thank you as well. Thank you, and and to every single one of you, just uh, be well and. And uh, enjoy the rest of the Omer, these holy days of counting. You know, we're just every single day, more and more. Today is Chod Shabbat Today is a day of really which encapsulates exactly what I've been talking about. Chod Shabbat Chod is submission. Netzach is just this power of going forward. That's what it's about Hashem. Without you, I'm nothing. With you, I'm everything. That's what it's all about. Tudar Rabbah Lachem. Tudar Bye-bye. Thank you. Amazing. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you, Rabbi Kawan. That was really special. And I'm so happy that we actually participated in breathing exercises towards the end. I think that that was really the, the cherry on the cake. And in many ways, I think you've opened yourself up for a lot of additional demand here. Because in my mind, actually the meditative exercises are the very heart of what I think so many of us would like to see more of, participate in, and perhaps even practice. So if you've enjoyed today's session, I'm going to be sending you out a short survey, and I would love for you to fill it in. Give me your feedback. If you've appreciated Rabbi Cowan's classes, it's really in your hands if you would like another semester, another seminar. So please do fill in the surveys. You'll be receiving that from me either later today or tomorrow morning. And uh, we've been in the presence of somebody that has made me feel very calm right now <laughs> and very whole, to use that word. So, yes, to you. Before, you. hang on, stop the recording.